Hey, what's up, y'all? This is Kosky and Fun Daddy back at it once again, kicking it for you and for yours. You know, the scenery that changed up a little bit, you know what I'm saying? Got a, you know, kind of a ghetto fire, whatever, and close to them ports, you know, no mosquitoes, no bugs, real nice out here. You know, I ain't done one of these videos in a minute, and it's been a while, you know what I'm saying? But, um, there's been a lot of crazy stuff that's been going on, whatnot, just in the third, you know what I'm saying? We got to really have a to sit down and have a discussion about what is racism, you know what I'm saying? And have a real discussion about that, you know what I'm saying? About what it is. You know, racism is an action word, you know, like Dr. Clark said, not Dr. Excuse me, Dr. Clark Anderson said, it's a group phenomenon, you know what I'm saying? You know, it comes down as a group thing, you know. To be a racist, you got to have power, you know, and it's an action word, you know what I'm saying? Words don't hurt, don't count. I mean, that's when you're being bigoted and mean-spirited, you know what I'm saying? But words, you know what I'm saying? This dude, you know, me calling somebody a cracker or, or the average white Joe Blow calling me a, a nigga or whatever, he can't stop me from going to school, you know what I'm saying, with his kids. He can't stop my kids going to school with him. He definitely can't. He definitely can't stop my money. You know what I'm saying? And how I'm getting it and whatnot. You feel me? You know, that's a racist thing. We got to chill out, you know, and understand, you know, what's the racist. You know what I'm saying? We really ain't got the term and the definition down yet. You know what I'm saying? Just because somebody don't like somebody, don't make them a racist. You know what I'm saying? You ain't, you ain't fit to buy in, in perfect, in perfect examples. You ain't fit to buy with any, everybody anyway. You know? We got to pay attention to that. You know what I'm saying? You got a right to be prejudiced. You know, you ain't gonna like everybody. You know, this, you know, that's why this shit ain't gonna really gonna work like that. Cause you know, somebody gonna get mad, they gonna have to blow that shit out. You know, and that's when you get your little mass shootings and all type of dumbass shit like that. You know. Also, too, the problem ain't us. The problem is them and their psychology. You know, but we never really got down. You know, what's the race? People get mad. Well, Trump said this and Trump said that. Okay. But being, you know, he's a racist and all that stuff like that. Being an officer of the United States, you don't, you don't have to be a racist. Every president I know in modern times show favor to the Jews over the Palestinian. That's a racist act. Matter of fact, the whole foreign policy in the United States is just racism. It's just common sense. It's the shit they, way they, act, they operate. You understand? Because it takes power. It takes power for the United States to take the money out of Venezuela and chop them down like they're doing right now with the Venezuelans. Making that country poor even though it's filled with resources. It takes power to do that same thing in Africa, what they're doing in almost every African country. You feel me? Those are race act. To me, you know, the 1994 crime bill with Joe Biden, Joe Biden's a super racist. But you don't hear people calling him out on that stuff. You know what I'm saying? Reason why the difference between a Joe Biden being a racist and, let's say, a Trump right now being a racist is Trump ain't really enacting no policy. He said talk a lot of shit on Twitter and shit like that, but he haven't enacted no policy that you could say, like, damn, that shit was racist towards, you know, black people. Black people. You know what I'm saying? While Joe Biden has proof positive he enacted the bad policy towards black people. You know what I'm saying? Even set up with the man with the Ku Klux Klan. You know what I'm saying? Try to make a constitutional thing to stop busting and stuff like that. You know? But black people won't harp on that and look at that and say, well, that's a racist motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? He showed you his racism pure and true. You feel me? That's racism. Pretty butterfly. Another pretty butterfly. That's nice. While Trump is just talking shit. You know what I'm saying? Wooty woo. You know. Is Baltimore a bad city? Just ask the people of Baltimore and ask them what they think. <laughs> you know, you'll get different responses on that. You feel me? You know what I'm saying? But right now... You know, people worried about because a recent other shooting happened and, and these white shows in manifesto. Racism is a gimme in America. I don't know where people got off, you know what I'm saying, where the people been at for the past couple, you know. Don't let them last eight years get you fucked up with Obama. You know what I'm saying? That's the real truth. And you got the whole soft American history before you on that, you know what I'm saying? Then you the dumb jackass, Mark. Mark. You know what I mean? Don't let the last eight years, that was an anomaly, you know. 
in my personal opinion, you know what I'm saying, this is me, my personal opinion, the Coast City Fun Day, the white folks that did that, put him up there and stuff like that, you know, he got a, a big groundswell of the black vote, Jordan D. But the white folks put him up there and said, see, we're not racist, we voted for him. You know what I'm saying? We voted for him and we like him. We voted, you know, how can we be racist? It was like an atonement for that guilt. You understand? To me. They put it as an atonement for their guilt, for what they, uh, the other uh, past transgressions of their ancestors. You know? To me. You know what I'm saying? That's just to me. But to show that they were just down racist and stuff like that. You know what I mean? And as I said before, it takes the power to be racist. A person can be bigger than mean spirited. Everybody ain't gonna like you. You know? That's a self esteem issue with all this stuff, you know what I'm saying? All this fat shit, man, then you fat, man. Fuck it. I'm fat, hell. Shit, I'm obese like Della Reese. But don't sit up here, you know, but don't pretend like it ain't a problem, you know what I'm saying? Or like an issue. Somebody call a point, call you out on it. You know what I'm saying? And if you you know, you feel good and have perfect self esteem about yourself, you're gonna defend yourself anyway, so what? You know? And that's one of the issues that you know that's going on. You know, in the community, you know what I'm saying? Black August, you know, revolutionary month, revolutionary time, you know what I mean? Our answers always to the big things in August. And I, and I, y'all should look forward for big things, not just within me, but also within yourself, you know? But this shit, we got to define that shit. What's the definition? The definition of racism, you know what I'm saying? Discrimination is a natural act. You can't put everything in your body, you know what I'm saying? You put too much sugar in your body, what's going to happen? You know what I'm saying? You're going to become, you know, your body going to discriminate, you become a diabetic. Same thing with too much salt and all that other stuff like that, you know what I'm saying? We got to start focusing up and start, you know, thinking about what, what's really good and stuff, what's, what's going on. You know, if your body didn't discriminate, you know, white blood cells and, you know, let's say the white blood cells in your body just discriminate and start eating them stuff. That's what, when your body, white blood cells are eating your body and stuff like that, it can't discriminate what's, what's good and what's bad, you know what I'm saying? It got to balance, you know, your body got to do that. Your body breathe, breathe in, you breathe in out, you know what I'm saying? You breathe in oxygen and you, you breathe out, you know, CO, you feel me? CO2. Shoot, that's why you piss, and that's why you you know have a have a have a bowel movement because your body can't is done with that stuff, and it, so I got to reject it. So it's discriminating. Your body is personally discriminating from what it is, from the food that you put in your body, whatever that may be, putting it out, and it can't use it. If it's in the body too long, it becomes a poison. You know what I'm saying? Discrimination is a natural, natural act. It is what it is. It's a survival tool. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I'm trying to say. Everybody going to be like, so when people say he's racist because he don't like you, no, he just don't like you. You know what I'm saying? Because a motherfucker racist. You know what I'm saying? Being Maybe your skin tone or whatever got something to do with it or whatever, whoop -woo, You know what I'm saying? But he can't stop you from doing this. He can't stop you, you know what I'm saying, from driving the freeway or whatever, whoop -woo, like that. He can't stop your money. You know what I'm saying? Get the fuck on. You know, now once, you know, once a racist, now you won't see a racist act like, you know what I'm saying? Like how they was blocking people from going to school, that's a racist act. Because it's got to be a, a group phenomenon. You know what I'm saying? How the FHA, the U.S. government, and the banks and stuff like that was not giving banks and loans to the black people. You know what I'm saying? That's racism. A group phenomenon. You feel me? When the police beat up on people. As an organization, you know what I'm saying? Don't matter clock white or black, you know what I'm saying? That's racism. We gotta know the definition of these things. Anyway, this Coast Gift Fun Day, you know what I'm saying? The channel been growing. It been getting pretty big and stuff like that. I ain't been even dropping videos for the past couple weeks and I'm still getting hits up, you know what I'm saying? So I got much love for that, you know. Hit me up with a cash app, man. Donate to the movement. We still moving big things and doing big bigger things. You know, reading up on black history. I'm going to finish up the um, Liberia series and go to a different series. I ain't going to tell it right just yet. Go, but um, I might drop a little. I'll drop a little hint. We're going to talk about the Moors in Europe, but not just in Spain, but where they was at in Switzerland and Sicily and things of that nature. You know what I'm saying? So 
keep the knowledge moving and pumping. Anyway, have a wonderful day. Peace. Having a relationship starting out to get wealth and resources and power. And but what they teach you now is that racism is, has something to do with liking people, getting along with people. That's not racism. And when I ask people, I said, do you know what racism is? They say it's prejudice. You cannot eradicate prejudice. Everybody got a right to be prejudiced. All prejudice is that you have a preconceived judgment or feeling about something based on previous experience. Right now, because of ice cream, I love, love burgundy cherry ice cream. So guess what? I'm prejudiced towards burgundy cherry ice cream. So now when I want some ice cream, I exercise my prejudice. I say, I'm going to get me some ice cream, some burgundy cherry ice cream, but that's what I'm prejudiced for. Now I say, now, where am I going to get it from? I've got a lot of ice cream from a lot of stores, half of one worth a quarter. That's what Baskin Robbins had the best. So now I'm biased towards which ice cream follow? Baskin Robbins. I'm biased to go there to exercise my prejudice. Now when I get into Baskin Robbins, I'll walk up and down the counter, look at all the cherry mocha, the black chocolate, chocolate rock, peppermint juicy fruit. I look at all that ice cream. And then guess what I'm doing now? Now I am discriminating. I'm discriminating against what kind of ice cream I want to, to, to satisfy my presence. And so I'll pick, and I go down and I'll say, oh, burgundy cherry, that's it. Now, that, that, that prejudice, that bias, that discrimination has nothing in the world to do with racism. Don't let people keep tricking you by comparing prejudice and discrimination with racism. That's why all the gays don't say, well, we're just as bad off as black folk. We're their prejudice against us. That has nothing to do with racism. You tell people, I don't care about your being prejudiced or discriminated. That doesn't bother me as a black person. I'm scared of racism. I'm scared of the fact that you're going to own and control everything. That's what you should be working on. So everything you do in this city must go after eradicating racism. Not prejudice, not bigotry, not getting along with people, not bias. You must try to redistribute some wealth and resources back in the hands of black folk as quickly as you can. That's what you need to be working on. Now, since we've never done that, and I told you slavery now distributed almost 100% of all this nation's wealth, power, resources. I, I heard that black guy out the parking lot. He, he called that white guy a redneck cracker. Isn't he a racist? No, he might be bigger than towards white people and poor whites, but he's not racist. That, poor, that, that parking lot attendant can't do anything to white people. All he can do is talk. He cannot stop white folk from getting an education, from owning a business. And so what they've done now is confuse the issue of what racism is so that all black folk in America are paralyzed. They're scared to do anything. They won't speak up for themselves. They won't fight for themselves. They're scared somebody's going to call them a racist. They can't even be something somebody's called them. And worse than that, you've allowed all the people you're competing with to also fall underneath that cover and declare they're just as bad off as you. That's why Hispanics and Arabs and Asians and humpbacks and lesbians and midgets all get into the affirmative action program. So you've got to learn how to play the games. Now let's deal with some other, other concepts now that you understand what racism is. Another concept is minority. Any black person in Baltimore, let somebody call a minority, you should cut them after you shoot them. That is an insult to somebody call you, and for you to call yourself a minority, nobody's going to be that stuck on stupid, unless you got a, a stupid license. You live in a social democracy that was set up in 1789. The first law of Congress in 1789, we became a nation, said this is a white country. This is a white country, and the quota on black folk coming in is zero, unless he comes in as a slave. And the rule of the social democracy then is that the majority will win and rule and the minority will lose and suffer. Why would you go around calling yourself a loser? I'm a, I'm a loser, I'm a minority, and I'm suffering. Why would you do it? Why would you teach your children to call themselves a loser? And worse than that,
that is in cities like Baltimore, why would you in Baltimore be going around pushing the city to give you a minority set aside when you make up 65% of the population of the city? You are the majority. Nobody on earth is supposed to be that silly. I go to Detroit, Michigan, and I'm speaking to the legislature, and they say, well, Dr. Anderson, before you talk, we will give you a plaque. And I said, no, before you give me a plaque, tell me what are you doing for black folk? They said, well, we got a 5% set-aside program downtown. I said, downtown where? They said, in the Office of Minority Affairs. I said, this city is 90% black. Why are you calling black folk minorities in a city where they're the majority? Somebody's elevator does not go to the second floor. Why do you keep calling yourself a minority and trying to get a minority program when you're the majority? So the one white woman on the city council said, but Dr. Anderson, well, if you, uh, what do you want to do? I said, in this city, the city council needs to pass a resolution saying that in this city, black people are the majority population. Once, you, once it's pointed out that you are the majority population, then it is against the law for other people coming in to rape and rob you through the government. Whites cannot come in there and take all the resources out. It's a violation of your rights. If you've had the city council in Baltimore to pass a resolution saying in this city, in Baltimore, we are a black city. That's 65% black. We are the majority population. Same thing in Washington, D.C. We, got a, we have a 77% black population. They're giving black folk 4% of the resources. So what whites have been successful in doing is that they are the majority in the suburbs and they're also the majority in the city even though they don't live in there. Because black people won't stand up for their rights. And say, no, I don't want any majority, any minority programs. I am the majority. And you sort of develop all these resources in this city for me. I should not have to come to Baltimore and find absolutely no black businesses of any nature. Why am I, I go to Detroit, Michigan again as an example. Detroit, Michigan is a 90% black city. They got 146 gas stations in Detroit, Michigan. 146 gas stations in Detroit, Michigan. Arabs own 141 in a black city. In the black city of Detroit, Michigan, Arabs own not only the gas stations, they own the grocery stores, party stores, liquor stores. The Koreans in Detroit, they own the barbecue restaurants, the nail shops, the wig shops, the hair products, distributorships. The East Indians in Detroit, they own the rest of the businesses. They own the Dunkin' and Donuts, the cheap motels, the check cashing services. Blacks own nothing in a city where they're the majority population. I got a million black folk in Detroit that owns nothing. Now, what's the impact of that? That's why in the 2000 census, the United States government declared Detroit to be the poorest city in the United States with the highest crime rate. And everybody's sitting back in the black leadership saying, oh, why are we so poor? You're poor because you're set stuck on stupid. There is a direct relationship in this country between how many businesses you own and how poor you're going to be as a group. Those groups that have no businesses are going to be poor and imprisoned. It is not the government's responsibility to help you do anything. The government responsibility and the police department's responsibility is to put you in jail and keep you out of the way. When you have a Katrina situation, which on one of my videos, I started talking about Katrina seven to eight years before it even happened. When you have a Katrina situation, which on one of my videos, I started talking about Katrina seven to eight years before it even happened. That's almost 10 years before that was what happened to Katrina. They got me crying on the video and they wouldn't take it out. But the video tells us what's going to happen in that city because the poverty rate was so high. 82% poverty rate in New Orleans.
before Katrina even hit. And nobody was concerned and understand that if you don't have any businesses, you're going to be poor. The reason black people are the poorest people in the United States is because we don't own businesses. Now watch this now. In this country, in America, the group with the highest income in America today are Asians. The middle, the medium family income for an Asian in America is $55,000 for medium family income. Y'all follow this along, so when I'm long if I've left you this evening, you'll never forget this as long as you live. The median family income from an Asian is the highest in the United States at any other group, 55000 Underneath them are whites. The median family income from a white person is about fifty three to 54000 The median family income for these Hispanics that you're also worried about and getting them into the country are over blacks. They're at thirty two and 33000 the median family income for black people is $19,400. Now, why are black folk on the bottom in income? Here it is now. Asians got a $55,000 income, median family income over here. Here's why they got that income. One out of every 10 Asians are in business. Again, $55,000 income there at the top. One out of ten are in business. Let's go down to the next level. You got whites now over here. Whites are at fifty-three to fifty-four thousand dollar income in that general range. They got one out of every thirty-four in business. Hispanics got one out of fifty-four in business. Black folk at the bottom with one out of a hundred and four. If you don't have any businesses, you're going out of existence. Why is that now? It's because all you're doing is working for a living. We're the only people that encourage our children to go off and get a good education and go get a good job. No other group of people tell their children that. No other group is that silly to tell their children Go off and get a good education, then go get yourself a good job working at a white company someplace. Everybody else tells their kids something different, and I'll explain to you with Chinese a little later. We are the only people that don't encourage our children to start businesses. If you go put your child into a job, or if you're working a job, you got to understand the purpose of a job. A person, the purpose of a job is not to enrich you. You cannot get rich working a job. The only way you can get rich working a job is if you're good at stealing. A job is designed to maintain you. A job is designed to keep you one way from the welfare line, unemployment, and food stamps. You work a job until you get too old and they retire you, and you got to go out and beg on the streets. They might, you might get lucky to give you a silver watch. A business will redistribute wealth and power to you eight times faster. If you have a business, you can also get a salary. But you can also get capital gains. You can also get depreciation. You can get appreciation. You can write all you got all kind of tax loopholes. You can write off all kind of things on your on your business against your businesses. You can do all kind of things. This system is set up where those who don't have businesses pay all the taxes. When Dixie had about 500 stores one year when I was on education in the state of Florida, I looked at the record. They had about 526 stores in the United States. When Dixie, like Safeway, 126 stores. And I think one year they only paid nine dollars in taxes. They got all kinds of loopholes, flip back, take backs, everything else to make sure they don't pay any taxes. You work at a job, you, you got you got nothing you can write off except your interest payment on your house and your t taxes on your house. That's it. 
the rest of your money is going to take care of the rest of this country. And we're the only people who have no businesses. Black folk are paying more than their share of taxes. Because we are so silly, we won't start businesses. Now, let me go to another issue. If you start businesses, what must you do? How do you start those businesses? I put all that in power numbers. Start businesses at this late date, it's too late for you just to simply go into a business. It's too late to simply go into a business randomly or randomly say, well, I'm going to start a business. I don't see any flower shops on the street, so I'm going to start a flower shop. It ain't going to cut it. Now, at this point, the door is almost closed on us in this country. If you're going to go into a business, you must go into a business where you have a competitive advantage. You must be able to tell me or somebody, the reason I'm going into this business is because I have a competitive advantage over my, other people, over the other, my competitors. And I'll ask you, what are your competitive advantages? You must build your, your, build your business around two things. Wherever your people dominate in population or wherever your people dominate in spending patterns. That's how you go into business. And if you unify yourselves, you got a chance. If you don't, you're through. Now you hear people talk about Dr. House, we should go into business, but we got a $700 billion 